Hey, it's Mike Bassick. Hey! Hey! Hey, 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 hey! What a surprise, Mike. How's it going, man? Good, man. I was watching you guys um, on the on the thing. I guess I'm waking up my dog now. Ranger, oh, no. he's not happy with me talking on the phone right now. But what, what's his name? Is uh, that man, Ranger? I was listening to you guys. What's up? What's the, what's your dog's name? Ranger. Yeah, keep it down back there, Ranger. We're talking Mavs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I had Maverick. He died. Now we got Ranger. Oh, um, oh man. If you trade for John Collins, he can't leave. You would have his rights. Oh, he would be a restricted. He would be a restricted free agent. So if you traded for John Collins, and let's just say the New York Knicks were like, we're we're throwing a four year, hundred twenty million dollar contract your way. <laughs> well, John Collins would sign that, and then the Mavericks would have the opportunity to match, and he couldn't leave. So that would be trading for John Collins actually pretty much locks him in to mm -hmm. you. Okay, that's good. That's good news. Because my 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 only thing was I d I don't want to like get a rental player for a playoff thing that most likely won't occur. If I don't even know if they're going to make the playoffs this season or not. So if that happens, it would have been like all for nothing. So that's good news about John Collins then. Yeah, yeah, and I think the Mavericks, unfortunately, you know, I mean, I hope they make the playoffs this year. I think they're going to make the seven through ten seed. Uh, you know, when you look at Utah, Phoenix, the L.A., they're impossible to catch. They've gotten off to such a good start. The Mavericks can't catch them. It's impossible. They pretty much have to go on a 15-game winning streak starting now to get into the conversation of being a top-four seed. And I don't think the Mavs are running off 15 in a row anytime soon. Billy said they're so, going to beat Brooklyn on Saturday night. <laughs> well, I, I think they could. Uh, they have they bad could. defense, so the Mavs should score at least 120 in that game. But it's just a matter of can you stop Harden and can you stop uh, Kyrie? Because I think Durant's out, right? He's, he, I mean, yeah. didn't they say he's missing five yeah. games? And I think that's part the schedule shows yeah, that Durant, I don't up. think, <laughs> will play against the Mavericks. Watch it be our luck. That's the game he comes back in, right. Mike. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be the game. Yeah. This but game's I think soon this was an unbelievable night for Luka. Um, just the two big threes that he made, and I thought he did make some big plays down the stretch. I texted you, Walt, in it. He had a big rebound when the Mavs needed a rebound, got the and then he got the bit. steal, and then he did make a great pass to Brunson. I'm going to give Brunson – look, you can't make every shot. Nobody's going to make every shot. I think by the time Brunson got the ball in the corner with 40 seconds to go, I think he was tired because he played the whole fourth quarter. Yep. So he was on his 11th or 12th consecutive minute of basketball and that's a lot to ask of a guy to drain three pointers when they've been on the court the whole fourth quarter right. uh you know even luca right he sat out the first four minutes of the fourth quarter so uh brunson missed that three look i don't know if dorian finney smith i think he's hit one big three pointer oh, all God. year i swear the, the celtics decided not to guard him guys goose egg the one corner three he gave goose egg Go tonight mike mike he had zero? He, get, he had yeah, zero yeah. points he had, tonight, In 39 Mike. minutes. In 39 minutes, he gave zero. Oh, no. we got to get better than Dorian Finney-Smith, man. He should not be on the court late in the game. And he tries hard. I'm not like, I'm not knocking the person. He tries hard. He's made a, a career in the NBA. But, I mean, if you're a competitive, like, hey, we can really do some damage in this league, Dorian Finney-Smith cannot be on the court in the final five minutes of a basketball game. So, Mike, uh, does this uh, win – give them a little, at least for Luca, and give them a little kind of confidence going forward. I mean, they've been playing well out of, as of late outside of that, you know, horrendous start to the season. What's your take on the last two wins? Oh, I think they're big. I mean, every game right now is big, especially the Memphis game, because you're fighting with them for a, a playoff spot. And I didn't know this. Uh, Reggie told me this. If you're the 9 or 10 seed and you win the play-in game, you have to beat that team again. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It, I didn't know. I thought it was just like a, a winner take one game, winner take all. So I mean, getting the seven or eight seed, which I think the Mavs are fighting for seven, eight, nine, ten. I think getting the seven or eight seed is big because then you get to play at home and you only have to win one game, not two games in that scenario. So yeah, these games are big. And I mean, Billy, just think how good the Mavericks are going to be when KP comes back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mike, hey, I got a question. <laughs> Well, first off, yeah. let's start. Let's start with this rumor because it was you that kind of ramped this thing up about the uh, trade deal. Now, EA is still optimistic because he's still gullible. He Whoa. still believe. He, I just still said. When the, uh, wait, 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 wait. Uh, 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 I was giving you. I'm just being fair as a reporter. I'm just giving being fair and saying, hey, this is what Cuban said. This is what Carlos said for our listeners to look. At. I don't want. We want. We want to be fair. Well, that's all I said. Mike, we do have to Mike, be fair. Cuban says the report's <laughs> not accurate. Okay. When somebody says something line, they come out and say, that's a lie. 
He said it's not accurate. <laughs> there's two different things, okay? There's not accurate, and then there's a lie. He said it ain't accurate. So you take well, it. Well, here's the deal. When there was a – I know it's baseball, and uh, I think it was the St. Louis Cardinals and Houston Astros. The Houston Astros got extra picks because the dude from the Cardinals – stole uh, of the computer of a guy who went from the Cardinals to the Astros organization, a front office guy. What the hell are you guys doing and baseball? what happened in this is it showed all the text and all the emails that a general manager and it's baseball, but the general managers in sports are all doing the same thing. Right. And a general manager talks to about 20 different people in a day that aren't in their organization or even more conversations about people that are in your organization and you're just throwing a lot of crap around and seeing what sticks and what doesn't stick right. and you're just getting an idea of how much do they like our players how much do they think we like their players and so yes it's yes cuban has had conversations with other whether it's owners general managers or donnie nelson they've had conversations about porzingis they probably haven't gotten very far or gotten close to pulling the trigger on any type of trade, but you can't give me that when you find like a computer stolen and you see what a general manager during a day, he's on the phone 10 hours a day, just texting and talking to organizations and just getting an idea on where players stand on his team and where players stand on other teams. Mike, and you, would you say that with Porzingis, I mean, with the Mavericks, I think that outside of Luca, they had everybody is like, hey, it's free for all. Anybody, they just had conversations on anybody but Luca, right? Yeah, I'm sure teams call. And guess what? They've had conversations about Luca. Yeah. I mean, yeah. they're not going to trade him. Right. But what happens is, is the Boston Celtics might just call, Danny Ainge might call up Donnie Nelson. They're great buddies and just say, God, Luca's awesome. Hey, would you ever would you ever think about like moving him for Tatum and Brown? Like I'm not saying that Danny Ainge would do that, but you might have a stupid conversation like that. And for a minute or two, Donnie's like, "No, I would you would trade Tatum and Brown for Luca?" And he might say, "Oh, I mean, if if it was and and that's and nothing ever really happens, but those are things that happen every day mm -hmm. in the NBA, every day in Major League Baseball. I don't know how much they happen in football because there's not many trades in football. No, but really. right. I mean, when you look at the sports that do trades, you're talking to other general managers, other scouts, other owners. You're talking to them on a daily basis, and just it's fantasy sports, except it's real." So, Mike, with uh, what's your take on what the rumors are with KP traded? Should the Mavericks be uh, looking to trade in KP? I know you said multiple times on these post-game shows that you have looked into it and you kind of like the idea of it, maybe. So what's your take on the, the rumors? Are they true, and do you think they should pull the trigger? I think they should really try to trade them, and I'll, I'll just throw this question out to you guys, and I'd love to hear your com conversation or comments on this. Will Porzingis ever make the all-star team in the Western Conference? Mm -hmm. If the Mavs never trade him, will he ever make the all-star team? I don't need that's, him to. That's going to be a no for me, man. I don't I, need him to. I don't, I don't think, want him to. Oh, oh, see, here's the thing. We're, we're, I'm a KP guy. I think he's great. I, 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 but, you know, you're, you made a really good point. I don't know if he would make the all-star team in the West because he has so much competition anyway. Yeah, so. um, but right. Well, and so in, in, the, in the competitive teams right now, are the Lakers, two guys made the All-Star team. Mm -hmm. The Clippers, two guys made the All-Star team. The Jazz, two guys made the All-Star team. Right now there's a big beef because everybody's saying that Devin Booker got snubbed and Chris Paul made the All-Star team. So, And Devin Booker will probably be added because Anthony Davis is out. So you kind of need two guys on your team to be All-Stars to win a championship or to be considered a championship contender. And if you guys are saying, because I agree, that KP will never be an all-star in the Western Conference. He's never going to be one of the 12 best players in the Western Conference. Then I do think we need to upgrade. It's nothing against KP. He's a good player. He's just not good enough. And unfortunately, he's so unreliable. He got hurt practicing. Yeah. Well, according to Walt, that's uh, that's because they're trying to trade him. He didn't really get hurt. I didn't say that. I just said, uh. I just said that <laughs> he's sitting out. I don't buy the back strain deal. I mean, they had went a week without practicing, and then he has back strain. He sit out. He sat yeah. out yesterday, and he sat out today. There, I feel like they're shopping him. That's just would me. you guys do the trade that was reported on February 11th? I retweeted it today on Twitter. Is it was February 11th, so it was 11 days ago that Golden State would trade James Wiseman, Andrew Wiggins, and Minnesota's top three protected pick to Dallas 
for Porzingis, James Johnson, and Josh Green. Would I do the trade? Uh, yes. Only because, um, well, there's two reasons. Yes for the Mavericks and no for the Western Conference because you're going to have to deal with that next year when it's uh, Steph, Clay, and Porzingis on the court next year. <laughs> but for this year for the Mavericks, yes, I would take that because uh, you, you got to find a way to get up under that contract because – you don't have any draft picks, and you need that draft pick, and you, Wiseman would be okay. I mean, it's not going to get you get you to the playoffs, but my thing is I don't think any trade you get with Porzingis is taking you to the next level. So, I mean. Okay. The only reason I like it, that that, that pick is, like, really sexy to me. That, that When you added that pick, that's what made me excited. Okay. And I'm not a guy who um, wants to trade KP, but th- when you mentioned the pick, I was like, okay. You know, and here's the deal, and I hate doing this because KP's not a bad player. He's a good player. Did he actually really help us last year? Did he? Is he really helping us in this the year? I mean, I get what you're saying, the, Walt, of like, I mean, I get what you're saying. Oh, man, without him, I don't know if we're going to be, a, yep. you know, the sixth or seventh seed. What is, it, what is he really doing to help us this year? He's unreliable again. He's inconsistent. I mean, I get it. You know, he puts up 16 and 8, and nobody gets upset about that. Dude, he's getting thirty million dollars. Yeah. He's he should be twenty two to twenty five every night, and when he doesn't score twenty, it's a bad game. Every time he does not score twenty points, it's a bad game. Every time he doesn't get ten rebounds, it should be that's under par for what we expect right. from KP. But it seems like sixteen and seven seems to be just fine with this fan base. That's not okay. Well, I will say this: I liked what he did last season, especially in the bubble. I mean, he came alive in the bubble before he got hurt. Uh, last season during the, during the NBA season, he I think he I thought he did well it's just that this season i'm okay with the offensive numbers but the defensive uh, he has defensive play has just gone down dramatically and that's kind of what's worrisome i'm did yeah. the meniscus tear reduce his defensive ability that much i don't know you know i think that teams just know i think you know he get, came he sat out for a while and uh, as teams started playing against them and more Western Conference teams got to play him a few extra times, they realized they could push him underneath the basket, drive right into his body. And I hate saying this. He's better than Sean Bradley, but he's very Sean Bradley on defense. <laughs> oh, Just I'm not the, laughing he, when you sit there. We had uh, Dawson uh, on the uh, postgame show the other night. He said Porzingis looks like a guy who just – Got good at playing basketball by playing basketball in his driveway. <laughs> <laughs> but you can just push him under the basket. We see all the best guards do it. You just get into his body, and you can push him right underneath the basket where he can't really block the shot. And I just wonder this. I think it's a good question is, then is he afraid to then leap while he's off balance because he has hurt his mm-hmm. knee so many times? And so at that point, he's like, look, I'm not on balance. They've gotten into my legs, the little guy, and so I'm going to save my legs here, and I'm not going to try to jump and block this shot. But I think a lot of it is he just is – he's a weak guy, and that's okay. You can be in the NBA and, and still be a good player and be weak, but when he gets his position down low, like when Shaq's like, get your position, and I get what they're saying. He can only only hold his position for one second, and it doesn't matter if it's – Muggsy Bogues or obviously Shaq, you can move him off of his spot within one and a half seconds. And yeah, Dirk was a skinny guy. You couldn't move Dirk off his position that easy. Eventually you could if you were really strong, but Dirk could hold his position. KP cannot hold his position, so it's up to the passer. If he gets position down low, you have to get it to him within one second because in a second and a half, he's going to lose his position. Right. Mike, one question before I let you go. The Mavericks trade Porzingis, and then what? Well, I mean, it matters who you get in the trade. Hopefully you get more reliable players. It's going to be tough to get a more talented player. I I will say to get a more talented player is going to be tough because teams trading for Porzingis are going to go, man, he's really talented, but he's always really hurt, and he's somewhat inconsistent with his play. Can we get the most out of him? They're going to say yes. That's why they're trading for him. But – Can you also attach like a Dwight Powell in the trade? And instead of having $25 million of free agent money this offseason, can you have $38 million of free agent money this season? I'm not saying that then solves all your problems, but I do think having your second best player or second most talented player be as unreliable on the court. And then when he's on the court, you're not exactly sure that night, you know, how he's going to play. Is he going to be okay or is he going to be great? I need him to be really good 
almost 80% of the time. Yeah. Everybody's going to have a bad game. Everybody's going to have those career nights. But you can't, you can't have, oh, he was okay or pretty good 80% of the time and then get those one every five games and then say, well, that's what he's going to be every night. He's, if he can't be consistent, and to me, I've given up on him being consistent. He's not going to be healthy enough to ever be consistent. He's a good player. He's a number three or number four player on a championship team. Uh, Mike, Mike, do we beat? Do the Mavericks beat Philly and Brooklyn? Or how, what's your what's your prediction on that, real quick? I don't think they can win both those games, but you know, you would hope you can win one. And I mean, I, as much as you know, if people think I'm ragging on KP right now, you need KP in these games, <laughs> like. It's a catch Especially now with Kleba having a bad ankle, like if you know, I mean, I I don't know what in the world against Joel Embiid. I guess we're going to play uh, Boban, uh, you know, more oh, minutes no. to try to you know put a physical presence on him. But it would be nice if KP came back and was hot. But you know, KP, remember how he says he needs ten minutes a night to start the game? Like he doesn't like going to the bench early because it ruins his rhythm. What do you think about having two weeks off of not playing basketball? You think he's just going to come out and be draining threes all over the place? I mean, he's a rhythm guy, and so he's going to look bad his first few games because he's not going to be in rhythm. Well, don't worry so, about yeah, I'd like for him to come back, but it's going to be tough to win those two games. Well, don't worry about it, Mike, because uh, if he sits out two more games, he's getting traded. Just Mike, being honest. Mike, uh, I got one Cowboys question for you, okay? We have Billy in here right. who thinks that Dak Prescott needs to leave and that Matt Stafford's better than him all that. Wait, so wait. let me ask you the question. By March 9th, do we get a deal done? No. <laughs> me, I'll – uh, I do think that he's franchise tag, but I think there is a complication on how healthy will he be the rest of his career. Oh, Billy's excited about that because he hates Dak Prescott. <laughs> Mike, that's not I, true I, at all. I, that's not I, true. I like him. I just wish I wish that uh, he was way more healthy right now. If if he was way more healthy, and he could get he could get completely healthy, but. Uh, if, if you're taking a big risk giving a guy 120-something or even more guaranteed money and not really knowing how stable his ankle's going to be the rest of his career. Mike, you you, you know, you got me depressed on KP. You got me depressed on Dak. What's going on? Where's Coach Boss at? Get me hyped. <laughs> I, well, I'll tell you what. Luke is, one of, Luke is going to go down as one of the greatest players of all time. Uh, you know. I, now the problem is, is here comes <laughs> yes. Debbie Downer. I don't know if it's going to be for the Mavericks. The oh, career, I, I do think him growing up in Real Madrid, the number one organization in Europe. I could see if this thing doesn't go right in the next three or four years, where the Mavericks are playing in conference finals or NBA finals. I could see in year six or year seven of him being here, going, "Hey, guess what? I idolized Kobe. I idolized LeBron, and the Lakers are the Real Madrid." of the NBA. I want to be a LA Laker. Well, that's Mike Bassett making us all feel very cheerful here in Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's up to Mark Cuban. It's up to Mark Cuban. Cause I put it on him more than Donnie Nelson. Cause I think Donnie just makes suggestions <laughs> and, um, and uh, Cuban makes decisions. It's, mm. it's up to Mark. If he can't build a championship team around Luca, then he will leave. All right, Mike, appreciate you calling in, man. We're going to be tuned in to you.